hey guys, this is lecture 11, I think. Yeah. And uh, we're kind of changing gears now in a pretty significant way. We've gone through the first half of the semester. We did our big recording session, and now we have a bunch of audio to deal with. Uh, I don't have the same audio that you do. I, I recorded these things a long time ago, so my audio is going to be different. You're going to have to kind of uh, make the, uh, the connections between what I'm doing with a different project and what you're supposed to be doing with your project. We're going to be making sure that uh, you get your project over to the Synth Lab and everybody saves it in their own area so that you can do your own tweaking. And then we're going to compare and listen and talk about what everybody came up with on their own. Uh, so that's kind of uh, the ongoing exercise that's going to be happening as we keep working on the different stages of mixing. We are talking about mixing one, but you could almost call this pre-mixing, or some folks consider this to be uh, comping. They uh, this, this looks a lot like the comping process, and some people refer to this as just plain comping. Um, so I want to direct your attention to a few things. What I have here is all these tracks, um, starting with the drums and coming up to a few other things. Uh, I right now just want to sort of get things uh, to a place where I can just listen to them. So I'm going to click anywhere through all this and play a little bit. Made a fool just like a clown But I keep sinking farther and farther So that gives me a little bit of drums and vocal and acoustic guitar. That's plenty for me to know whether I'm on a verse or a chorus. Um, one thing that uh, you'll notice if you look at this project, everything at the beginning uh, of the drums and down through a few different areas here looks like it's all one take. There's not been any, any obvious edit points. But when we get to the acoustic guitar and the vocal, where there's a lot of edit points, um, this means probably what happened, and I actually I know this is what happened because I was there. Um, whenever there was a problem, we just pulled from a different take. We found our best take. We probably did three or four takes of this song. One of them was far and away the best take. But if there were any problems with that take, we could go back and look at one of the previous takes and see if one of those had um, just that one or two notes or that one phrase a little better. And if it did, then we lifted the better phrase and dropped it into the overall better take. And that's what we're looking at here with the vocal and acoustic guitar. Uh, you may be wondering why the edits on the vocal and the ac acoustic guitar are lining up perfectly with each other. And that is because... I'll play a little bit of acoustic guitar soloed for you. There's so much vocal bleeding into the acoustic guitar, and that's because the vocalist and the acoustic guitar player are the same person. He's playing acoustic guitar and singing with the band live at the same time. He's not a particularly loud guitar player, but he's a loud singer. So his voice is really getting into the acoustic guitar mic. Therefore, if there was ever a time where we had to fix something about the vocal, we had to go get the acoustic guitar track uh, from that same vocal take. Otherwise, you could hear that things were messed up. Things were not line, lining up. You were getting double vocals that didn't line up just on that one little section that you were trying to fix. That means that we had to drop a guitar part you know, in with the vocal every single time uh, that we had to change a part of the vocal out. This is not uncommon uh, at all when you record in this way. So that's why it looks the way that it does there. And then down here we have background vocals where we just kind of recorded them in the places that they go and didn't worry about rolling through the whole take, the whole uh, song. So what are we talking about specifically? We are in this, this pre-mix phase we're talking about timing and pitch. And I have to apologize to you that these things are really, really tedious. 
I don't know anybody who just thinks about, oh my gosh, I can't wait to go fix a whole bunch of flat notes and late beats. But it's really important. This is the type of thing where if you've got obvious mistakes, I mean, you know, even on a low budget, on a high budget, then the goal is perfection. You you make everything sound the way that everybody wants it to sound. Every beat of the song, if you've got the money to do that. For a low budget uh, operation, usually you're just trying to fix the worst offenders. And sometimes the worst offenders are pretty bad. Uh, so you go in there and you do what you can to, to, to clean it up. So timing can be, you know, uh, a late bass drum or snare drum or guitar strum or bass guitar, anything, anything that just doesn't line up and lock in. And so let's take a look at how we would deal with something like that. I remember that at measure 57, the acoustic guitar did a little something that I thought was not so great. In fact, it's right here. Let me show you what it looked like a minute ago. I actually already fixed it. But before I fixed it, I'm going to undo it and, and return things to the way they looked a minute ago. Uh, pull this guy back here. Unroll him. Let's listen one more time. Now let's bring the click up a little bit and you'll hear what's happening. The acoustic guitar is actually coming in early. And so we're looking at the acoustic guitar attack right here. But here's where the downbeat is. Measure 59 is, is where the attack should be. And he's actually rushing it. We can double check this by going down to the bass. And we see that the bass is lined right up with 59 and the click like he should be lined up. So an easy fix here. Um, would be to come to the beginning of the articulation of that acoustic guitar part and command T to split the track. Then I'll come over here to uh, the uh, not quite the beginning of the next articulation, but a little ways before it. Command T. I'm going to split. Now I've I've chopped this track with uh, in, into a region where just the the, the chord in question has been highlighted. I want to line it up with that right there. So what I'll do is I'll take the end of this and pull it back a little bit to make some room. And I'm going to line this up right about where it was with the, the bass. We can see that the bass articulation just barely comes in front of the beat, and that's fine. We want the guitar to match it, and it does. So if I have uh, X fade, which stands for crossfade, selected, any time that I drag a region on top of another region, I'm going to get a crossfade between those two regions. And this is pretty handy because it hides your edit points. Um, it just blends the two into each other. So let's solo the acoustic guitar now, and we'll listen with the click. And now it sounds like he's coming in right with the click. Now, odds are we might not have even noticed that if the bass guitar was loud enough. Um, or it just depends on how hot we were going to mix the acoustic guitar. But the good news is, is that we fixed a problem. This was a real issue. It was, a, it was um, not a tight sound at all, and um, it could have been picked up by somebody. So this is just one of probably, you know, dozens maybe a lot more than dozens, depending on how much time you want to spend going around fixing problems like this. But this is the type of timing stuff that can make a song sound really tight and professional versus sloppy and amateur. Um, so there's an example of fixing a timing issue. And uh, we're going to go do a pitch issue now. And as you can imagine, the uh, pitch issue is probably going to be on the vocals. So
So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and take a few cents down. I'm going to Command T at the beginning. He slides up right there. I'm going to try to split it right there where he slides up. And so now we've got the note that is kind of sharp. And one way to fix that is with the time and pitch machine. Um, so we double click on this guy and it opens up our audio editor. If you have your advanced tools set up correctly, which means you have show advanced tools checked and audio checked here, then you will have the option to look at this as a track or a file. You need to be looking at it as a file. And then you would go to functions and time and pitch machine. So this thing is going to come up, and uh, we can select from a lot of different options here. Um, I usually like to leave it set up as complex and free. And what we're going to do is just select about minus 10 cents. Let's go ahead and process and paste that. And we're going to listen back. Father, Father, down. And so that's one way to do this. Um, it does kind of push it in the direction that you want it to go. Um, a better tool, but we don't have it available in the uh, Synth Lab, is Melodyne. And Melodyne lets you do both timing and pitch work. Uh, in a little bit more intuitive way. So if you do get into this, you might uh, think about dropping 99 bucks for the cheapest version of Melodyne, and it'll plug right in and work like a plug-in does. But we've basically done the two things that we wanted to do. We've, we've moved something uh, into a better timing position, and we've changed a pitch so that it's not quite so sharp. Now, let me go ahead and bring up uh, a point that uh, kind of... Uh, blows this whole thing out of the water for my project. Remember when I told you that the guitar uh, mic had so much vocal bleeding into it that we had to do the edits the same everywhere? Well, unless I come over here and also pitch shift the guitar the same amount, 10 cents down at this spot, it's going to sound bad. Let's listen to how bad it sounds. Second father, father down. Now we have a really pronounced chorus effect on the vocal just because of the bleed that's coming through the guitar track. So that's one of the reasons why in, in this particular setting, tuning the vocal was pretty much out the window unless you were going to go and also tune the acoustic guitar to match it um, because there was just so much bleed. However, this was a trade-off that the vocalist was willing to make. He really didn't sing that badly out of tune, and um, you know he wanted to play the guitar and sing the vocal at the same time, and you're just not going to get perfect isolation when you do that. And when you don't have perfect isolation, you don't get to just do these fixes um, like we just demonstrated. So keep that in mind <laughs> as, uh, as you go ahead and uh, go into the Synth Lab this week and take a stab at doing these two things. These, this is your exercise, your lecture, and your exercise, uh, both rolled into one, um, because now you've got the audio, and you're going to go in and see about fixing some timing issues and some pitch issues on the project. Uh, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at the rest of mixing, which is the more fun part of mixing, um, but uh, we got to get through this one first. So good luck, and I'll see you guys to talk about it in class.